name's Carlo Cranmer, and I play with From Ship to Wolves. We're a 3 0 piece, and we're basically a metal band, kind of. The closest thing I would say would be alternative metal, maybe alternative metal with just a touch of industrial. Well, I was brought up listening to everything from Jim Reeves, Beatles, because my family are all into good music, old music, very good music actually. Um, I think one of the most influential bands would be Korn, Linkin Park, Nine Inch Nails, Chevelle, there, there's quite a few to be honest, I, I wouldn't put my finger on one band. Um, but it's more like a collective of, of collection of tracks and the same with the other members. They all listen to very versatile um, bands and we all listen to different things. So once we come together, it's kind of mashed it all up together. <laughs> to be honest, there, there's multiple different ways how we create songs. So on some aspects, I will have a phrase that I want to get off my chest. Um, and I'd start writing about it and then before you know it, it starts to evolve into a song. I sometimes might pick up the guitar to find a, a matching riff or a melody line and, and it, then once it's kind of getting close to a, a kind of tune then I'll, I'll present it to the band members and we'll, we'll smash it together. Um, sometimes it, it, it is a jamming concept, we do start messing, up, messing about jamming, having fun and then suddenly you know, it starts to evolve into a song. So there are multiple different ways and it does come across it even sometimes through you know just me playing the guitar I come up with a riff and it evolves instead of from the lyrics it evolves from the music and then I have to add the lyrics afterwards. Um, all fantastic ways to, to, to write music but they all kind of have their pros and cons. In. I would always prefer to take it to a professional level. Um, but I would never want to lose the fun aspect of it. It has happened before and it resulted in me not playing music for about a year and a half, which luckily enough, really good friends got me back into it. Uh, one of the members of another band, Linear Genies, and John Castiel from The Climb Four, they both kind of pushed me back into music. Um, and the support of my, my lovely missus. So, yeah, it, I'd love to take it professionally, but I'd, it's definitely a major factor not to lose the fun aspect of it. No, I, I actually don't, don't do lives very much because I used to get very depressed because my, my reaction would be I should be studying to get my ass on stage and play instead of them. Um, one of the first bands that I saw live, locally we're saying, um, oh what was that band called? It's not a met definitely not a metal band, um, The Riffs? The Riffs they're called, The Riffs. We, we went to Parcherville, there was Ali, it was still open, um, and they were playing there, they were playing a, a, a small set, they had just launched um, Jack the Ripper, I think it was called, the song. I heard the song and I just left. I, I, I literally, I left Parcherville, I went home, I packed up and I went to the garage and I carried on practicing because I couldn't spend another second. Because it was such a good song, it was very inspiring but it pissed me off so much that it's like you guys are on stage, you're doing a great job, what the fuck am I doing? It's like, so yeah, definitely a memorable moment. <laughs> Oh shit. Um, Unless it's you. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> to be honest, we, lo we lost, we had a fantastic guitarist. Um, and we lost him because of me. I, I, I'm, I had, <laughs> shit, that's a <laughs> shitty question. <clears throat> um, so basically I have hissy fits, what we call them. So when you lose your shit because you've been bottling up so much. And the guitarist, hats off to him. He's an amazing guitarist and he was an amazing friend. But I'm the kind of person that if we're going out, 
you know, you can come late, I don't care, we'll meet up, I'm super relaxed. But if it's practice, you know, it's practice, we don't fuck about practice. And he was going through some stuff, he had just meeting a new, new chick, and, and he was building a relationship, so it was a beautiful thing. And I should have kind of said, you know what, congratulations, I'll support you. But instead, obviously, I was a dick, and I was like, well, why are you late? It's like, and things started building up, it got really heated to a point where, uh, I called a meeting, a whole band meeting, and I, I walked in and I was like, right, the whole band is going to give him some shit to, to get him, because he's a fantastic guitarist and we need him in the band. And we sat down and I was, I'm thinking, we're going to give this guy some words to try and help him focus and get back into the band. And suddenly everything just turned to me. It's like, Carlo, you're, you're the problem. I was like, oh, okay. So I, I just took it all in. And um, thanks to them, I kind of, I think I've, I've gotten better. I think, I think I've gotten better. Vlad's watching this, I'll kick your ass if you say anything. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I've gotten better now. Wow. Holy shit. Um, dead or alive? That, why did you have to put dead or alive? That, that makes a such... This, this is a question I don't think I can answer. The list is too big. It can go from Michael Jackson, because I think he's iconic, all the way to, to Brian Head Welch from Korn. I think, actually, I think Brian Head Welch from Korn would be the number one. Yeah. Or Trent Reznor. Oh, yeah. Trent Reznor. I'm, I'm going to stop there because otherwise the list is just <laughs> going to keep going. Oh. My family. I think that's basically it. My family and friends. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty fucking boring to be honest, outside of music. Or conspiracy theories, maybe. I, th I think, I think we try to keep a fresh sound. We're very honest with our music, so we're not gonna sing about anything we don't believe in, or we're not gonna state anything in our lyrics or, or, or our style that we don't believe in. We are very versatile on our style, so we're not tied down to, you know, it's just metal, old school metal. If I wake up today and I want to write a reggae song with some form of distortion, it, it could happen because we have nothing that can hold us back. Um, and we write music based on our emotions and how we would like to be perceived for that specific song. So it's just like each song is a story of its own and it comes from an honest background. It's a story or an experience that I think the few gigs that we have done, we've kind of surprised people with the versatility and the, the deep meaning uh, of our music and our lyrics. So I think that's what we would do.